and you are not really his children at all. Since we respected our earthly fathers who disciplined us, should we submit even more to the discipline of the Father of our spirits and live forever? For our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years, doing the best they knew how. But God's discipline is always good for us, so that we might share in his holiness. No discipline is enjoyable while it's happening. It's painful. But afterward, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in his way. So take a new grip with your tired hands and strengthen your weak knees. Mark out a straight path for your feet so that those who are weak and lame will not fall but become strong. Work at living in peace with everyone, and work at living a holy life. For those who are not holy will not see the Lord. Look after each other, so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. Make sure that no one is immoral or godless like Esau, who traded his birthright as a firstborn son for a single meal. You know that afterward, when he wanted his father's blessing, he was rejected. It was too late for repentance, even though he begged with bitter tears. The word of the Lord is blessed this morning, and shout, and so am I! So am I. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and your blessings this morning. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're saying that he's our rare God. He watches over us. And we thank you, Lord, this morning. We were
Glory to God. The God is so faithful, hallelujah. Continues to do great and mighty works. And we trust in you, Lord, this morning. And we hallelujah. We're not going to look to the left or to the right, oh God. But we keep our eyes focused, staying on you, Lord. Hallelujah. Look to us, Yes. But when's coming our help? Our help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven, earth, and everything in between. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue.
us never forget that God is sovereign, almighty, very present. Amen? Amen. Amen. There ain't nothing going on in your life that he doesn't know about. That's right. <laughs> Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. And I want you to think about it in its full context. You might ask why it happened. How long it's going to happen. When you're going to come out of it. <laughs> Amen. I just want to remind you. God already knows about it. Yes. So you might come to grips with He, he allowed it. Yes. Glory Amen. Yeah. Yes, Lord. And He was with you before it got there. Amen. <laughs> he's with you while you're in it. Yes, sir. And He's going to be with you when you're out of it. Amen. 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 And He hasn't changed. Not he won't change. And I guess we need to wise up and say, Lord, there must be something you're doing with this challenge I'm going through. Amen. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. God has called us to be like himself. God is holy and he purpose. He desires and he has made provisions for us to be holy like himself. Amen. I've used uh, this portion of scripture, 1 Peter 1, 15 and 16. You've heard it over and over again and you'll keep hearing it until the Lord pulls me from this direction. 1 Peter 1, verse 15, it says, But now you must be holy in everything you do. Just as God who chose you is holy. For the scriptures say you must be holy because I am holy. So we've endeavored to expound on God's call to us to be like him. And last Sunday we started with recognizing and focusing in on the Lordship of Jesus, His Holy Lordship. His Lordship secures our future with God. Yes. Amen. If Jesus is Lord in your life, that means He's sovereign. He rules over everything in our lives. It secures our future with God. Today we're going to talk about His Lordship fueling our faith in God. If Jesus is Lord, you're a man or woman of faith. Yes. Amen. If Jesus is Lord, you walk by faith. You Amen. live by faith. You trust Him by faith. Amen. You believe God, and so God is bigger than anything you're facing. And, and His Lordship fuels our faith in God. And thank you, Sir Corey, you put it. These are my points today. If you don't catch them when I'm speaking them, she just put them up there. <laughs> he provides our faith. Amen? Not only does He give it, He sustains it. Amen. How I many of you know your faith is going to get tried? Oh, yeah. Amen. You got kids, your faith is going to get tried. <laughs> you got a job, your faith is going to get tried. You had money, <laughs> or you have money, your faith is going to get tried. Amen. Good health, bad health, your faith is going to get tried. Amen. You live in a neighborhood. You got neighbors. Mm -hmm. Amen. My Lord. Amen. You're on the college campus. Your life is going to be filled with challenges, but God will sustain your faith. Amen. And 
Here's also the blessing is as you walk with him, your faith will increase. Amen. He'll grow. And then lastly, there's a reward for being a man or woman of faith. And so the Lordship of Jesus Christ is key. Amen. Sister Simon read from Hebrews chapter 12. Let's go back to Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to walk through these scriptures for a little bit and encourage you about our faith. And I want us to remember something, to capture, catch hold to something because life is real. Amen. Life is not a bed of roses. Yeah, it, it's not a, an easy road. It's going to have challenges. Amen. But, but your faith will sustain you. Hebrews chapter 12, Sister Simon read verses 1. And I'm going to start with verse 1 and then remind us something from chapter 11. The writer of Hebrews says in verse 1, he says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. The writer of Hebrews speaks to us that there are those that were written about in Scripture, we see it through the Old Testament, that they have lived a life of faith. And we are being encouraged, don't let anything keep us from living a life of faith. Amen. And you know, faith is the substance of things that we hope for and the evidence of things not seen. But I want to encourage you to, to remember that faith is about how we live in this world. If Jesus is Lord, we can live faithfully in this world. Don't get caught up in the, the arguments and the stuff you find on social media that gives you a sense and an idea that everything's going to be okay and nice and good and prosperous for you in life, that you can have everything you ask God for. Yeah, those that, that, that preach and teach as if the Christian is here to live a comfortable life, full of pleasure. I'm not saying that you can't have a good time, that you can't have some good time with your family, but your walk with God is not going to be full of good and kind and nice things. If you want to remind yourself, look at Jesus. <laughs> he came to do the Father's will. Yeah, Jesus went to a party. Just so you know, he went to a party and they ran out of wine. And he demonstrated his power by changing water into wine. You remember that. In Sunday school lesson, but he wasn't there to have a good time. He was there to demonstrate who he is and was. Amen? Amen. In Hebrews chapter 11, just a, a few verses so that we can be reminded that those that lived by faith did not have an easy way. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 33. Just so, if you can read the whole chapter and list all of the fathers and the mothers in faith that did mighty works in the name of God. But notice here in Hebrews 11, 33 says, By faith these people overthrew kingdoms. They did good things. They ruled with justice and received what God had promised them. They shut the mouths of lions. You know the good stories of those that did great and marvelous things in the name of God. Verse 34. They quenched the flames of fire and escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. They became strong in battle and put armies to flight. These men and women of faith. Verse 35. 
women received their loved ones back again from death, but others were tortured, refusing to turn from God in order to be set free. They placed their hope in a better life after the resurrection. Amen. In verse 36, some were jeered at, and they, their backs were cut open with whip. Others were chained in prisons. Some died by stoning, and some were saved and sawed in half, and others were killed with the sword. Some went about wearing the skins of sheep and goats, destitute and oppressed and mistreated. They were too good for this world. Wandering over deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. These are men and women of faith. All these people earned a good reputation because of their faith. Let me, let me pause for a moment. They earned a good reputation by their faith. Just want to remind us, the audience, to demonstrate our faith is not the people around me. Amen. It, it, it's our call to be walk, walking by faith, but the world can't see faith. It's God who's looking for faith. And even the New Testament said, will, will he find faith? So God is looking for the men and women who are going to trust him as they walk through this life. I, 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 I want to, amen, I, I, I'm, I'm delighted if my wife is able to say her husband is a man of faith. Amen. And, and I desire that from her. But I'm most concerned about God looking at me and saying, I found faith in this man. I want to earn a good reputation with God. And here the scripture says, yet none of them received all that God had promised. These were the agents of faith from the Old Testament into the New Testament. And verse 39 and 40 says, for God had something better in mind for us. So that they would not reach perfection without us. So if you hear nothing else, your walk of faith will have testings and trials. Yes. Amen. So don't be surprised when difficulties come. My Lord. Even the scriptures tell us in the news, for the trying of your faith, yes. your faith will be put to test. You can read the whole list. The trying of your faith works what? Patience. So be encouraged. Now Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2, Sister Simon read this, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Amen. Faith comes from Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's initiated and it's perfected by him. And, and, and the verse 2 gives us a sense of how it comes about because of the joy awaiting him. He, he wants to know uh, that we're going to make it. And he anticipated us making it and he endured the cross disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor at the right hand of God waiting on us. Amen? He is waiting on his, us. The Lord Jesus provides our faith. I, I use that as one of the bullet points and I'll be done. I've got this four. He provides our faith. Amen. Amen. You don't have to dig up faith. <laughs> faith comes from God. He's the Lord of faith. Romans 10, 17. This is a scripture that you know very well. So then, faith comes by hearing, hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. 
This is New Living Translation. Let's keep that up there. Let's keep it up there. New Living Translation is fine. So faith comes from hearing, that is hearing the good news about Christ. We become agents of faith. When Jesus is Lord in our life and we, we believe in him, now we become agents of faith. It's powerful and it impacts others when we share the evidence of faith that transforms our life. We can't give people faith, we just can show them the evidence of faith. Yes, Lord. Amen. That's why it's important for us to testify of what God has done. Yes. You believe God, you trust in Him, and this is what He did in my life. Yes. Your testimony of salvation is the power of the gospel and the power of faith in God. Tell it to somebody. Yes. Thank you, Lord. If the scripture comes to mind right now, it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul said this, For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes it. Right. Amen. You shouldn't be ashamed of it. I wonder why would somebody be ashamed of telling what God did in your life? If he brought you out of darkness, Amen. If it was an ugly life, he brought you out. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Amen. Amen. I can tell you where I was. I might be ashamed if I'm, I'm, I'm not was. And I'm still is. I hope y'all follow me. Are you, are you following me? You can't say I was if you still is. I'm sorry. I'm, 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 I'm sorry for the poor English, but I'm trying to make a point. Amen. You can't say I was <laughs> if you still is. <laughs> I, I, and I'm not making fun of folks. I'm just saying you ought to be say I was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. That's the testimony that the gospel is real and powerful in your life. Amen. You ought to be able to tell. You don't have to tell everybody your story, but God's going to send you somebody that needs to hear your story. Amen. Right. Yes. My Lord. Amen. And I and tell you that time and time again, if, if the Lord has had men and people to come into my life, I run across and I hear where they are, and I can say, you know what? <laughs> I was where you are. I was. <laughs> and I can tell you where I is. <laughs> Let me stop blowing up English. <laughs> but but that's what it is. Faith comes from hearing and hearing the good news of Jesus Christ. And it, it changes your life. And others must see and hear our faith. They, amen. They can see faith. When you testify. Amen. They can see the product of faith. Amen. That's why we, we are obligated to testify as to what God has done. Hebrews 11.6, a reminder. Hebrews 11.6, you know this one. It says, without it, mm -hmm. it's impossible to please God. Right. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists. And that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Yes. Amen? Amen. So, the Lord provides our faith. Amen. He also sustains it. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. You can't have faith and just lose it. All right. God's not going to let you lose faith. Amen. You, you can't let you, but God's going to help you sustain it. Galatians 6, 9 says, let's not get tired. <laughs> Amen. God's going to help you keep your faith. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Amen. God will sustain you by keeping you a keep going spirit. Jude says it this way in verse 3 of Jude. 
He said, Dear friends, I've been eagerly planning to write you about the salvation we all share, but now I find that I must write about something else, urging you to defend the faith that God has entrusted once for all time to his holy people. Amen. So don't get tired of doing what's good. Don't give up. Defend the faith. God will put that in your spirit to keep pressing. Amen. We said Hebrews 6 in, in um, well, we didn't do 11 yet. Hebrews 6, verses 11 and 12. Again, we're reminded about how God sustains this. Our great desire is that you will keep on loving as long as life lasts in order to make certain that what you hope for will come true. Verse 12 says, is that it? Then you will not become spiritually dull and indifferent. Instead, you will follow the example of those who are going to inherit God's promises because of their faith and endurance. God will sustain our faith. Yes. Here's a word. Faith endures. If you trust God, it's going to take you through any and everything. Amen. Amen. Believing and trusting God brings endurance. Not only does our faith come from God, He provides it, He sustains it, He also increases it. Amen. 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 Anything, if you're not progressing, you're falling back. Amen. As we journey in Christ, you can't sit down and say, I've gone far enough, I'm just going to hang right here. No. Amen. If you, if you decide that, you're losing ground. Lord. Amen. You must keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. Amen. Amen. I wish I knew that song, but moving forward. Yeah. Not going back. I'm glad I don't know the song. The Lord not only sustains our faith, He increases our faith. Amen. Romans chapter 1. And I want to read these in both verses. Romans chapter 1, verse 17. Romans chapter 1, verse 17 says, This good news tells us how God makes us right in His sight. This is accomplished, listen, from start to finish by faith. As the scriptures say, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. Yes. The King James Version says it this way, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Amen. It, it Im, implies to me is that faith has different levels. Mm. Amen. You have to grow up in God. Amen. God's not going to overload you with the demands when you first start as a babe. He's going to grow you up into a, a, a teenager, then an adult. Amen. And then a mature adult. Amen. He'll make you a teacher of men and women. Amen. 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 And so he takes you from faith to faith. He, he will increase our faith. So, verse 3 of chapter, uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 3. We're going to read through and uh, uh, highlight some things and then we'll make our last point. The writer of Hebrews in verse 3 says, Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people then you won't become weary and give up. God doesn't want you to give up. After all, you have not yet given your lives in your struggle against sin. That's a strong scripture. It says how important it is for us to trust God. Trust God even if it means your life. Amen. 
Ah, let me give you a scripture that reminds me. It says, you divide, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my father. Let me give you a little bit better picture of that. If somebody has a gun to you and says, if you deny Christ, I'll let you live. I'm sorry, I don't want to make you think of something so morbid, but that's that's the kind of gist of it. Is God says, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father. Yes, yes. And when we look at the scriptures, we'll find that men and women of faith were willing to die my God. without denying, before denying Christ. Amen. You know, the Hebrew boys. Yes. Amen. They said, <laughs> we ain't eating this food. Because God can sustain us with the food we eat. Mm -hmm. Another time they were told stop praying out in public. Or praying like you. Other man through the window wide open and prayed. He got thrown in the lion's den. And God caused the lions to be at peace. Amen. Amen. Other three got thrown in the fire. And said even if God doesn't deliver us. We will not deny our faith in God. Amen. Amen. They wrapped them up, tied them up. Amen. Threw them into the furnace. You know the story. The people that threw them in burned up and died. Mm. The king was watching all of this. Did we throw three in there? <laughs> And now there are four. And this amazes me. And King says, the no, fourth one looks like the Son of God. Yes. Look at God. Amen. They were not going to deny their faith, even threatened by death. Amen. That's what this scripture is saying. <clears throat> is that you are not yet given your lives in your struggle against sin. Mm. Amen. Know that sin is our enemy. Verse 5, and have you forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you as his children? He said, my child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline. I've read these scriptures before, but just remind us that God will discipline in us. Yes, he will. He does discipline us. Let me read verse 5 again so that... I'm reading it all together in context. And have you forgotten encouraging words God spoke to you as his children? He said, my child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline. And don't give up when he corrects you. Now we could discuss these verses a lot. But just listen to what the writer is saying. Is that God will discipline you. And when God disciplines you, don't give up. I mean, no, God will discipline you when you do something out of line. And he's saying, don't give up. Because the scripture says, for the Lord disciplines those he loves. Amen. That's verse 6. For the Lord disciplines those he loves, and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. Verse 6. That's some bad stuff. When I say bad, it doesn't feel good. Uh, have you ever been, amen. I remember having to spank my own children because I got spanked this way myself. My mom was so strict. She didn't have to tussle with us. She just said, hey, lean over this chair. <laughs> and you lean over and she paddled you good. And my sons today can tell you that's what we did. I ain't, I, I, Brian, get bigger than was get bigger than me. I ain't tussling with you. I say, lean over this couch. And the thing is, he knew what it was about. And because the script, and because I love him, and, and the scriptures say it's not comfortable, easy, or pleasant when you get it. But but it bears peaceable fruit. And, and, and he's speaking to the people of God, just in case 
We're not catching this or putting together. He says he disciplines those that he loves. Yes. We're the ones he loves. So if you're gen genuinely endeavoring to live for God, he's going to correct you sometimes. Yes. Uh, uh, let me be clear so I'm not throwing that out at you. He's going to correct us sometimes. Yes. So I'm including myself. I'm not talking at you. I'm talking with you. Amen. For if verse 8 says, if God doesn't discipline you as he does all of his children, it means that you are illegitimate and are not really his children at all. Let me move on to that. That's a whole other discussion. Since we respected our earthly fathers who disciplined us, shouldn't we submit even more to the discipline of the father of our spirit? And live forever. Look at that promise. For our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years doing the best they knew how. But God's discipline is always good for us. Mm -hmm. So that we might share in, look at that, His holiness. Look at that. God's discipline <laughs> is a tool. For sanctifying. Are you hearing it? Verse 11. No discipline is enjoyable while it is happening. That's what I was quoting a few minutes. It's not, amen. If you ever got a spanking, a discipline, you were chastised or whatever, it wasn't fun. The scriptures say that. It, it, it's not enjoyable while it's happening, but it's painful because it's painful. But afterward, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. Amen. 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 So that all of those that are anti-capital punishment for children need to read the scriptures. Because there's a way for doing it. It's a right living for those who are trained in this way. Verse 12, let's move on. So take a new grip. <laughs> take a new grip with your tired hands and strengthen your weak knees. Mark out a straight path for your feet so that those who are weak and lame will not fall but become strong. Verse 14, I love how the New Living Translation, it says because it's going to take effort. Everybody say effort. Effort. It takes effort. Working Working at living in peace with everyone. No. Work at living in peace with everyone. It means it's going to take some effort. Amen. And work at living a holy life. It means it's going to take some effort. For those who are not holy oh, will not see the Lord. Amen. The Lord is the one who makes us holy. So we must surrender to the work and the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God to shape us in holiness and His work. And notice that it's in the context of Scripture that talks about discipline. Discipline means training. It's not just punishment. It's training. Yes. How many know is training causes you to develop better skills? Amen. I'm thinking about my grandson, Herb. He, he's become a much better hurdler because he trained it. Amen. It was hard because he had to put in time and effort. He had to stumble over hurdles. He had to learn how to do quick stepping over and do all the little, little jumping and whatever. I watched him at times. It was work. And I saw the progression from being just hopping over hurdles to... He was, he, he, was, he, was, he was gliding over them because it took work. Yes. And so we have to put in the work. Verse 15. We're almost done here. Look after each other. We're in the body of Christ. We're in the family of God. We should care for one another. And here's a writer telling us, look after each other. So that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Be concerned when your brothers and sisters 
are struggling Amen. in their journey. Amen. All that means, it's a time for you to pray. Amen. And to care. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you. Corrupting many. Make sure that no one is immoral or godless like Esau who traded his birthright as the firstborn son for a single meal. You know that after when he wanted his father's blessing, he was rejected. It was too late for repentance even though he begged with bitter tears. You know the story in the Old Testament. I shared with you about the Lordship of Christ fueling our faith. It provides our faith. It sustains our faith. And it increases our faith. Jesus as Lord over our lives. He is the curios. I love that word. He's the supreme authority over our lives. When Jesus is Lord, he rules everything in your life. The Lord provides faith. He sustains our faith. And he increases our faith. Because faith comes by what? Hearing. And hearing by the word. So it's important for us to stay in the word. As we stay in the word, our faith will increase. Amen. When we hear the word, it's not just audibly hearing it, but hearing it in our spirit. And he rewards our faith. How many know that faith is promised to become sight? Yes. We will see him one day. Yes. Amen. Amen. He, he promises that we will see him as he is, high and lifted up. Yes. Amen. And here's all the promise also. It says when we see him, we'll be like him. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I didn't put anything up there. Amen. But when we see him, we will be like him. And the scriptures gives us an indication that we will be glorified and be in the same image that he is. I'll tell you, I can't describe it, but I'll tell you what compared to where I am. Amen. I won't be old. I won't be gray. And I'm talking about the negative aspects of that. I won't be tired. Amen. I won't be weak. Not sick. I won't be sick and ailing of some kind of disease or ailment or whatever. My feet won't hurt. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Amen. Because when I see him, I'll be like him. Amen. Yes. Amen. That there's reward for your faith. Scripture says mortality will put on immortality. immortality. Yes. Amen. Amen. You can take the calendar, throw it to the side. Amen. Amen. I won't be counting days. Amen. Or years. Or worrying about how I'm going to look and feel next year. Amen. I go to the doctor every year and the doctor asks me things and uh, did you fall down? <laughs> or oh, when was the last time you fell down? <laughs> See, uh, all, they expect all of us three heads to fall down every now and then. And I'm not, I'm not, I, I know it happens. But I take it like said, I haven't fallen. I didn't say yet. <laughs> but there's coming a time when you won't have to worry about all of those things. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I want to put up this slide here and, and I'm done. Put up uh, the one with orthopraxy and orthodoxy because I wanted I enhanced it from Wayne. 
Brother Wayne and I had a conversation. I, I, uh, I, I found these two words and they were intriguing to me. <laughs> Orthodoxy, which is holy doctrine or writings or teaching. And I said, orthodoxy must always lead to orthopraxy, which is holy living or holy practice. Brother Wayne said, it's as simple as walking the talk. <laughs> you, you mean walk the talk or practice what you preach? I said, you know, that's right. I guess I wanted to sound magnanimous. <laughs> but, but that's what it means. <laughs> God gives you the grace and by his presence and Holy Spirit to be able to walk the talk. Amen. And practice what you preach. preach. Yes, you want yes. to sound magnanimous, say orthodoxy must be orthodoxy. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Let's stand together. The Lordship of Jesus in your life is absolutely a must. If he's not Lord in your life or my life, we're in trouble. Amen. Right. Amen. If you're, you believe the gospel that Jesus is the Son of God or God coming down to us as his Son to save us because he took on our sins for himself or to himself, to pay sin's price because he was holy man, because Adam and Eve lost their first estate and, and they became sinners and passed that on to us. Right. <clears throat> and Jesus came to pay it all. Yes. And when he paid it all, he purchased what we lost. My God. He, he, he redeemed. How many of you know the word redeemed? Needs to buy back. Yes. And so he purchased our holiness and gave it to us. Scripture says, without holiness, no one will see God. And so I want us to, to think about the big terms of the big words because Jesus paid for holiness. And God says, be ye holy because I am holy. Yes. Pursue holiness. Yes. And I'm endeavoring by the grace of God to teach. Holiness touches everything in your life. It ain't just the way you dress. All right. It's the way you think. Amen. It's the way you listen. Treat people. It's the way you respond. Yes. It's the way you spend your money. It's the way you make your money. And the greatest example on how to do it is Father, as 
Brother Wayne is praying. The song poet says Jesus paid it all. All to you we owe. Sin had left the crimson stain, but you washed it white as snow. So we acknowledge that, we celebrate it, and we declare it even as we pray in this moment. We include those that are listening in and looking in this moment uh, during our recording and live cast and perhaps later on on YouTube. Holy Spirit, we trust you and the work that you do. You're the one that reveals the Lordship of the Son of God and his saving grace for every soul that's bound in darkness. We pray that your love will flow amongst us and through the airwaves and, and touch every area of need. And reveal the love, the agape of your kingdom and the gospel that will save every soul. Father, we pray for your healing presence for those that we mentioned by name earlier today. Brother Roosevelt and Sister Lorna, 